If you haven't already done so, walk away from the desk where you picked up this guide and out into the great high space of the atrium. Isn't this a wonderful place? It's uplifting. It's like a Gothic cathedral. You can feel your soul rise up with the building around you. This is the heart of the museum. And it works like a heart, pumping the visitors around the different galleries. If you look up, you can see walkways, elevators and stairways leading up or round the walls of the atrium between the galleries. These are the arteries. The separate galleries all lie off this central space, and to go from one to another, you must come back here. In the great museums of previous ages, rooms link from one to another, and you must visit them all, one after another. Sometimes it can feel as if there's no escape. But here there is an escape, this space, to which you can return after every gallery to refresh the spirit before your next encounter with the demands of contemporary art. This building recognizes that modern art is demanding, complicated, bewildering, and the museum tries to make you feel at home so that you can relax and absorb what you see more easily. As you look around, you'll see that every surface in this space curves. Only the floor is straight. These curves are gentle, but in their huge scale, powerfully sensual. You'll see people going up to the walls and stroking them. You might feel a desire to do so yourself. These curving surfaces have a direct appeal that has nothing to do with age or class or education. They give the building its warmth, its welcoming feel. And in this way, the atrium tries to make you feel at home and prepares you for the purpose of the building, the art it contains. Paradoxically, these sensual curves have been created by computer technology. Let's take a closer look at one of the stone-clad pillars in this space. If you stand with your back to the entrance, there's one to your right, holding up a large stone box that actually contains a tiny gallery. Go right up to it. This pillar is clad in panels of limestone. Run your hand over them. Squint along the surface. Feel how smooth it is. Because of the way the surface of the pillar curves, each of these panels is slightly different. No two are quite the same, and this is true for all the curved walls of the building. If these panels had been produced by conventional means, this would still be a building site, and the cost of the building would be astronomical. But these panels were cut and shaped by robots, working to a computer program developed for aircraft design. To a computer, the mathematical problems involved in fitting together this vast jigsaw are simple. This process is very new and it should have a revolutionary effect on the way architects work because it will allow them to embody more freely the productions of their imagination as well as allowing them to build more cheaply and to a better quality. Now turn to your right and look at the glass tower that contains two of the elevators. The glass surface of this tower also curves and again the curves are produced by panels fitted together but here they overlap like the scales of a fish this is no idle metaphor. The architect who designed this building has always found inspiration in fish. He dates this obsession from the days when he used to go with his grandmother to market to buy a live carp, which she would then take home and keep in the bathtub until it was time to cook it. Here, little Frank would play with the carp, and here the magic of its sinuous, scaly form somehow entered his bloodstream. If you look to your left now, Beyond the pillar, under the stone box that we looked at a moment ago, you'll see the entrance to a large space. This is the largest gallery in the museum, and believe it or not, it's known as the fish gallery, because the long, curving shape of this part of the building is derived, once again, from the shape of the fish. Let's go in there now. Press your pause button until you're in the gallery. You're standing in a room of 3,200 square meters. It's 150 meters long and between 12 and 25 meters high. Contemporary art is big. In fact, some of it is enormous. And this gallery was designed to accommodate the huge pieces that artists have begun to create. 
walk over to the left-hand side of the gallery and look up at the ceiling. You'll see a lighting gantry hanging from it, and above that, a skylight. There are skylights like these throughout the building, but they're not intended to light the objects in the gallery.